Meanwhile, the Trump team is doing damage control in the wake of last week's dinner, now trying to put some distance between the white nationalist and the former president. Trump, Trump took hours to even acknowledge the dinner before later using his social media platform to write, quote, Kanye West called me to have dinner at Mar-a-Lago. Shortly thereafter, he unexpectedly showed up with three of his friends whom I knew nothing about. That is, a is lie. not true. You can't get close to Donald Trump at Mar-a-Lago without the Secret Service knowing everybody who's coming in. However, three sources familiar with the dinner tell NBC News that Trump at the very least knew one of the three friends brought to Mar-a-Lago by West. Karen Gierno was the Trump campaign's Florida director in 2016, and those sources say Trump knows her by name and sight. Trump later corrected himself in another post, oh, acknowledging yeah. he knew at least one of the people brought to dinner that night and yeah. added that West is a seriously troubled man. Because he wants to run against him. Hugo not, Lowell. Not, not because he's been spewing anti-Semitic remarks. So yeah. Trump, Trump doesn't say he's a seriously troubled man when Kanye is spewing anti-Semitic remarks. But he does when he decides to run against him for president. Well, and here's the thing. Okay, let's try and let's try and believe his words. No. And a white supremacist walks into Mar-a-Lago for dinner, and you don't think way, someone whispered? By the way, great up your line for a joke. A white supremacist <laughs> walks into Mar-a-Lago. But it's not a go, joke. It, it's not a joke. They say, well, of course they did. And so the minute you find out who it is, you say, I'm sorry, sir. You need to leave. That would have been a good thing to do, especially uh, with the white supremacists. what everybody would do. Hugo Lowell of The Guardian reports that while Trump's team has urged the former president both publicly and privately to denounce Fuentes... Here we go. The former president made clear he does not want to criticize him go. for fear of antagonizing a devoted part of his base. He will not criticize a Holocaust denier. He will not criticize... A guy who has said some of the most heinous anti-Semitic remarks, anti-Jewish slurs. He won't do that because he doesn't want to offend some of his supporters. It's just, I was about to ask a question, who thinks that way? But we know who thinks that way. And it's why he keeps losing elections and why his party keeps losing elections. Let's bring in NBC News senior national political reporter Mark Caputo, also the founder of the conservative website, The Bulwark, Charlie Sykes, the host of Way Too Early, White House bureau chief at Politico, Jonathan Lemire, and the host of MSNBC's Politics Nation, and the president of the National Action Network, Reverend Al Sharpton, Charlie Sykes, our former tribe. What say you? Toxic. How horrible, huh? Well, as you point out, we've been here before, haven't we? Um, this feels very, very familiar. But, you know, the thing about Nick Fuentes is that he's not your garden variety um, bigot, uh, any Semite. Uh, he is a Holocaust denier who has uh, compared Jews who were murdered by the Nazis to burned cookies. Um, but what is interesting, of course, is the, the two points you just made. I mean, number one, uh, the silence of Republicans who have this uh, muscle memory of acquiescence, you know, don't dare... Um, criticize uh you know the, the, the former guy um but but again look um they've done this again and again it's sort of baked in right if you support donald trump you look the other way from charlottesville you look the other way when he when he hung out with uh, with notorious uh bigots uh, but it's also interesting and i think a real tell that donald trump does not want to criticize nick fuentes who who by the way is is so deranged that people like mike lindell look at him and go wow that guy's crazy uh he is so far <laughs> out there that donald trump does not yeah. want to criticize this um white supremacist white nationalist holocaust denying neo-nazi because yeah. he understands and he's been playing this game uh this winking um you know wink wink game with the alt right with the extreme right that he does think is part of his his base and so republicans have to decide you know, do they want to continue to uh, do they want to continue to be complicit in all of this? And because they've decided this over and over and over again, and by the way, it's not just about winning. Um, it's also just a fundamental test of morality. Like, what do you stand for? Who are well, but, you? But, but Charlie, this is what I don't understand. Charlie, they yeah. failed that a long time ago. They failed right. 
the, the, yes. the basic test of, of political morality a long time ago right. when they went along with this guy in his Muslim ban. They went along with this guy right. post Charlottesville. We could go down the list. So, so I'm kind of like, I always say, I'm a Baptist. I don't really care why people are converted. I, right? yeah. I just want them converted. You know, just when they play just as I am, 18th verse. <laughs> if you're walking down, I'm just as You'll happy as it. if you walk down on the first verse. This is what I don't understand, though. We know. They failed yes. that test. We know that Paul Ryan, a guy that you yeah. and I both have known a long time, yeah. love, respect, respected politically before. I'm speaking for myself here. On one day, he says Trump's a racist. On the next day, he endorses him, right? Okay, so we got that. Right. They lose on the morality front. I at least would think that like Paul now, they would go, wait a second, we can't win when this guy is, is leading the way. We can't win when we're silent right. in the face of, of white supremacy, in the face of anti-Semitism, when yeah. there's a guy that compares Holocaust. Right, right. So so the question is, they lose in 2017, post-Charlottesville. Yeah. They lose in 2018. Yeah. They lose in 2019, governorships in Louisiana and Kentucky. They lose in 2020, everything. They lose in 2022. So you know my next question. Okay, you're not going to be converted for the right reason. When are you going to be converted for the wrong reason? Because you're going to stay out of power. Like, why can't... I thought Republicans right. were supposed yeah. to be sinister and smart and know how to play this game. Well, basically, they're sitting around waiting for somebody else to take care of this for them, aren't they? Um, they're hoping that something is going to come along. You go first. You do this. By the way, if you want an interesting little uh, historical tidbit about the, the the failure, one of the few Republicans that spoke out against this over the weekend was Chris Christie. And by the way, you know, congratulations to, to, to uh, the former governor. But if you look at uh, the video of Donald Trump uh, lying and denying um, that he knew who David Duke was, guess who's standing right behind him? So there's a lot of history here that now that, okay, now that we're losing, um, we might speak out, but there, there are very, very few. And I guess this is the, this is the habit, the, the, the fear, the, the, the assumption that, you know what, if he keeps going this way, he will implode. Don't help him uh, by saying anything about him. But it is extraordinary, members of Congress, um, his rivals for the 2024 nomination. And I want to stress that also this is, um, and I, I think you, you mentioned this before, this is a little bit next level because Nick Fuentes is such an overt neo-Nazi. But it's also yep. next level because there are a lot of people in MAGA world who uh, know who Nick Fuentes is, who despise Nick mm -hmm. Fuentes. He's a very, very divisive figure. Um, but the notion that Donald Trump did not know who this was or does not understand what he's doing, I think, is incredibly naive. I think it'd be very hard for anyone to believe that at this point. Um, what yep. do we know, Mark Caputo, about this dinner, about any interaction that Trump had with Nick Fuentes? Well, what I can tell you from my reporting, uh, Milo Yiannopoulos, who was a far-right provocateur uh, from 2016, he's now the de facto, quote-unquote, campaign manager for Ye, Kanye West's uh, you know, not-yet-existent and maybe-never-existent presidential campaign. He said he was the one who kind of set this up. Uh, he had uh, this advisor of Trump's from 2016, Karen Giorno, uh, pick up Kanye West, Nick Fuentes, and a, and a third person from the Miami International Airport, drive them uh, to this dinner. At that point, they sort of talked their way in, according to them. Uh, Kanye was on the list. The three others weren't. And then at the dinner, that's when uh, things got heated, as you described earlier, when Kanye West decided to sort of troll the troll and tell... Donald Trump that he should be his running mate. Uh, that made Trump rather angry. Now, from what we understand, Nick Fuentes did impress Donald Trump, according to the people at the dinner that I've spoken to, which includes Nick Fuentes uh, and Karen Giorno. They didn't discuss anti-Semitism, racism, or the like. Instead, Fuentes laid it on kind of thick and praised Donald Trump as his hero, said he loved Donald Trump, but he thought Donald Trump was erring, and Donald Trump was too much now a product of the establishment. And so this Kanye faction 
allegedly, uh, showed up with the idea that they wanted to bring Donald Trump back to the Donald Trump of 2016, not the plastic Donald Trump of the establishment that they say he's now become. So it, it was a really sort of bizarre dinner. It's probably one of those things all of us wish we could have witnessed in some way, shape, or form. It eventually ended, as you had noted, with Donald Trump sort of yelling at Kanye West and Nick Fuentes saying, hey, you're a smart guy. You're working for Kanye. There's no way he can beat me. You know that. Uh, and then he also wound up insulting Kim Kardashian, which Kanye West objected oh. to as well.